Thanksgiving Day, whole world watching versus the Commanders. Joy, what can Dak Prescott prove tomorrow? <sighs> Uh-oh. Nothing. Ooh. Zero? Check the box. Keep moving. Dak is good enough and has done enough in this league to me that week in and week out, against opponents that we feel he should beat, he doesn't have anything to prove. And particularly this year, they've been taking care of business for the most part. Outside of that Arizona game, they have been taking care of business. And I think that is a sign of a good team. Do they have more to prove in the postseason? Yes, I think that they do. But Dak Prescott is a franchise quarterback. The Dallas Cowboys are one of the best <coughs> in the league, bless you, and one of the best teams in the NFC. So to me, I don't think that they have anything to prove. This is a divisional game. Those can go sideways. This is a big game that everyone will be watching. There's a little more pressure. Yeah. But Dak Prescott has done enough in this league that he shouldn't have to prove himself in this game, to me. You know, before we started talking about Thanksgiving, my answer was nothing. Mm. But then I realized he's going to be the only game on TV in yeah. that time slot. Everybody is going to be watching. Dak Prescott numbers, he can put him up there with Patty Mahomes. He could put him up there with Lamar Jackson. He could put him up there with Brock. Whoever you want to put him up there with quarterback-wise. Tua, he could put them numbers up there with. So for me, you being the only game on TV, this is your time to let the world know that you are in that MVP conversation. If you go out here and you're the only game on TV and you got that star on the side of your helmet and you throw for 400 and four touchdowns, I don't care who the opponent is with everybody watching, I think Dak Prescott is going to get in this MVP conversation and it's going to be very, very serious MVP conversation <clears throat> when you talk about Dak Prescott and his numbers on top of his team winning and on top of his team dominating in some of these wins. Wow. Wait, wait. MVP. MVP, like Shady. Best player in it. Like, best you know player what? in the world. I won't even. Anyway, uh, to answer the question. What does what? Dak, what can Dak prove? Oh, uh, he can just prove that this keeping this this um, this hot streak alive, right? I mean, I, I, I will say that Dak has been playing really, really well lately. Um, despite who they've been playing, he's been doing a great job of dominating. A lot of people were putting a, a point of finger to, well, they have the easiest schedule in the NFL, which is true. Mm -hmm. But one thing they are, they are doing against, with this schedule is they're dominating these boys. Dominating. Even playing weak teams, right? That you don't see a lot of the straight blowouts in the right. NFL. Um, so I, I love what he's doing. I think keep the hot streak alive, be more consistent, um, and then build more confidence. I think Dak Prescott's a guy that doesn't have a lot of confidence. Why do you say that? I just say uh, up and down from his interviews, he's always just looking for, you know, what, what people say. He's always worried about what they say. You said this, you said that, you count us this way, you count us that way. Like, different things he says in the media. And I, I put myself in them shoes as a ball player. When, when a player is always mentioning the media or different things, it's like, okay, are you confident? Right? So, and I think when he plays against some big games, he kind of, he, he hides a little bit. I do think, so saying all that, Winning this game and the way they've been doing it, I think it builds a lot of confidence with the teammates and also with itself. This is what I struggle with at this desk and this conversation with everybody here is I vehemently disagree with this notion, Shady, that Dak Prescott can gain confidence by beating such an inferior opponent. In my experience, if I know somebody from a talent <clears throat> perspective is beneath me, if I beat them, I don't gain confidence. I gain confidence by beating somebody who is equal to me or better than me. Now, you on the football field work better than me. If I beat you in one-on-ones, pass, rush, or guarding you, I gain confidence. If I beat the practice squad kid who I know is going to get cut, there was a third string running back in his college, Division II, I gain no confidence. Mm -hmm. How do you think, or do you think, Dak can gain confidence well, by beating a commander's team that just lost to a, to a Giants team? I, I gave you an example in boxing, right? In yeah. boxing, all, even all the greatest fighters. Floyd, Floyd Mayweather, yeah. one of the greatest of all time. When they first start out, they go against the, the, the weakest competitions. They build it up, right? And that's just because they don't want an easy win. They want to build their confidence. So now I'm beating the good dudes, the weak dudes. I beat everybody. I'm undefeated. Who can, who can stop me? You look at the Cowboys, right? They, put some, they beat some solid teams, beat some bad teams. Now we want to see them beat some good teams. But when you're, doing, when you're undefeated every other week or every week, week after week, week after week, you gain that confidence. No doubt. So if it's the Eagles you're playing or, or, or if it's the Commanders or the Panthers, you feel unbeatable, no matter who the opponent is. And I think that's just something that's building that armor of being super confident. Real quick, James, because you're co-signing, and I can hear you audibly co-signing, but I am hard-pressed to believe you played with Charles Woodson. I believe mm -hmm. that Charles Woodson is a top-10 defender in the history of football. Cold, Maybe bro. not the NFL, yeah. but the history of football, collegiate and professionally. Top five. Put him, get, get. That's fair. I, will, <laughs> I promise you I will not argue <laughs> with you on C. Wood. Yeah. You gain as much confidence mm -hmm. by beating the undrafted free agent yeah. as beating Charles Woodson in one-on-ones. Yeah. Yes. Oh. And the reason why I say that is because oh. 
You came out of Texas, right? Yes, sir. When you came into the National Football League, did you have confidence that you could make this team? No did doubt. you have confidence that you could guard of anybody? Course. Why? Because the teams you beat up on in Texas, yeah. the players you, uh, right? Point. And you, you ain't did nothing in the pros yet. But your confidence came from you beating Oklahoma or you beating Baylor or whoever these teams were, whether they good or not. Your confidence of you getting drafted and coming into the National Football League stemmed from what you have done in college, and you ain't done nothing in the league. Shady came from Pitt. I'm sure when he got to Philadelphia, he like, these dudes can't tackle me. It ain't because he'd been going up against these NFL dudes. He built that confidence from college. So I don't care who's in front of you. You build confidence by whoever you beat. And one thing I will say about the Dallas Cowboys that was Shady said, even though these teams are weak, are so-called weak at what we think no, they're they weak. They dominate. They dominate it ain't they winning by three. They are beating these boys they down. Are. So that's confidence for the team and for the players that we like that. Joy, here's where I struggle. All, all, all of that sounds great. It sounds so good, but it all evaporates the moment the Cowboys play a good team. Remember what the Cowboys did the first two weeks of the season. Y'all remember that, right? Yeah. 40 to nothing versus the New York Giants. Historical performance. We have not seen an opening game blowout of that magnitude at the opponent's house, I believe, since the turn of the century. Then you go and you beat the Jets 30 to 10. 70 to 10 they had won combined the first two games. That didn't matter, because yeah. they ended up losing to the Cardinals. Say the Cardinals was a fluke. A lot of offensive linemen were out. I won't even judge that. It didn't matter, because when they saw the Niners, they got bombed on. Yeah. So mm. where I struggle, Joy, and help me with this is, I do not think a 30-10 to 10 win over the Panthers, a 50-0 to 0 win over the Commanders, a 43-20 to 20 win over the Rams has any bearings on the Cowboys games when they play legitimized opponents. Because they did all that, got blown out by the Niners. Did all that, still lost to the Eagles. Did all that, caught it. Like, they do all of these great things, but it, the confidence amounts to nothing in, from what I see. Well, I don't think that they're losing to these better teams because they're not confident. They're then losing. why are they losing? Because they're, they're, not, they're not matching up to the competition. Uh, th these are all confident men. And, uh, and on top of that, where, where, uh, like, I like the comparisons of Texas and, all, and you know, all these things. Everyone on the other side of the ball is a professional, is a one percenter. They're, beating them is not beating uh, some Panera Bread state. That everyone on the other side of the ball gets paid to be there. They're professionals. They have years of experience. They are trained by professionals. They're coached by professionals. They're the best of the best. So even if they're not the best of the very best in the league at the moment, they're still professionals. It, 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 there's no such thing as a bad win in the NFL. It doesn't, it doesn't amount to anything. Is it going to give you the same confidence that if you blew out a team 40 nothing that was the, leading the NFC? No, but to say that there's nothing to gain from beating these teams. By the way, you have to beat these teams to get into the postseason, which is their goal. So if they're dropping these games, it certainly would matter. So why would it not matter that you're not only beating these opponents, but you are, to, to, to our point, blowing them out, which is hard to do in the NFL. A blowout in the NFL is really a touchdown. <clears throat> like, most of these games are decided by a few points. So to, to be beating these opponents the way that they are has to amount to something. If it doesn't amount during the regular season, it's helping them get to the postseason. If they lose to every good team during the regular season but go to the NFC Championship game, what difference does it matter that they, got, that they lost during the regular season? That's not their goal. They are not looking for a regular season championship. They're looking to go to the Super Bowl and win a Super Bowl. So win the games that you're supposed to win, win enough games to get to the postseason so that you can participate <clears> in the dance. And that's what the Cowboys' goal is. So to say that they gain nothing from it or they don't gain any confidence from it, do your job. And they're, doing, they're not just doing their job. They're like really, really doing their job against opponents that, no, we don't think are very good, but they've won games as well. There's, there's, they've also beat other opponents. So I, I, don't, I just don't think and, that that has and no they didn't make, And they didn't make the schedule. So that's one thing right. I do give them credit for is because, like, you know, a lot of the, 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 the conversation is more on, well, who are they beating? They ain't beat nobody good. Now, my thing is the, the, the bad teams that they, they are playing, they whooping them. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what you're supposed to do. But it doesn't. Here's my issue, Shady. And my issue is it doesn't translate. It's my issue. Sometimes you see it translate, sometimes it doesn't. I'm, I'm speaking now as an analyst, taking a step back. I'm not in the Cowboys locker room, so congrats if they win the game tomorrow, happy for them. But it doesn't change objectively how I'll analyze the data. We saw the Minnesota Vikings last year, and we watched the Vikings and we said, wait a second, they're 11-1 and 
but they have like a minus point differential. Mm -hmm. And then they hosted a playoff game. Shout out to the Vikings. I believe they hosted the Giants. Giants. Correct me if I'm wrong. Week one. And they lost to a 9-7 and Giants team. Mm -hmm. So objectively, all of us as analysts can look and say, man, they didn't beat anybody. Now, I'm not going to chastise them because they didn't make the schedule. Mm -hmm. So beat who you were supposed to beat. But I can still look at the data and say, wait a second. When y'all played good teams, Cowboys, Mm -hmm. y'all lost. When y'all played bad teams, y'all smoked them. My hope in life is if you smoke somebody bad, it translates to when you play somebody good. But did you feel, because we all felt the same way about the Vikings last year, you feel that this Dallas Cowboys team is like the Vikings were last year? I don't, but I have that concern, and I can't ignore that concern. I feel the same way, by the way, about the Cowboys as I currently feel about the Dolphins. Dolphins, I have the concern, and I refuse to, as an analyst, ignore the concern, because at the end of the day, the Dolphins beat the brakes off the Broncos, and the Dolphins beat the Chargers, and the Dolphins beat the Raiders, and I think the Dolphins beat the Giants, and I think the Dolphins may have beaten the Panthers, Mm -hmm. but when the Dolphins saw the Chiefs in Germany, they lost. When the Dolphins saw the Eagles in Philly, they lost. When the Dolphins saw the Bills, they lost. When the Cowboys saw the Niners, they lost. When the Cowboys saw the Eagles, they lost. So I can't ignore the fact that you haven't beaten a good team. It matters. Yeah. I I mean, I guess you could, for every team in the NFL, just always question marks, right? And one of the question marks for the Dallas Cowboys is, can you beat the top teams? One of the question marks for the Cowboys, Dak Prescott, can you ball out the same way you go against the the Giants and the Panthers? Can you ball out against the Niners like that? Because we haven't seen it yet. So every, every team has question marks that they need to answer. Even Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, we win over and over again, and there's still question marks. Mm-hmm. So I don't really mind that issue that you have. I don't mind that issue because it, it, that's why you play the game, to prove it. The question mark we have by the Cowboys, well, we going to find out. Yeah, and I think that's the main thing. I mean, you got these questions because this season they have not done that. When they had the two opportunities to play really good teams, they did not win, right? So <clears> you're <throat> saying forget all them dominating the wins and all that type of stuff, which is good. When you played the Niners and you played the Eagles, you did not win. Now, when they played the Niners, they played extremely bad. Mm-hmm. At least when they played the Philadelphia good Eagles, good they played a whole yeah. lot yeah. much better. You know what I'm saying? Dak Prescott played better, right? One possession game, go down there, score, could go either way, right? Defense for Philadelphia made, made, made a play. But at the end of the day, would you be surprised if the Dallas Cowboys played the Eagles in Dallas and beat them? No, but it would matter to me. Right? You feel it, me? It, it would matter, matter but would you would matter. not be surprised because yeah. this team is built the right way. Well, let this me ask you team has that everything they also, that they need to go chase a championship. They split last year. They're divisional opponents. Dak Prescott has a great record against Eagles. NFC East opponents. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I hear what you're saying. My questions are, are, are probably the same. I just can't say that none of these games matter. Like, and none of them attribute to any kind of confidence within the locker room or as individuals. Like, let, you still have to go out there and play and win this game. Let me then speak on the to, road too. Let me then speak to the analysts, y'all. Now I'm no longer speaking to the former athletes, y'all, of, at, at different levels in different sports. Now let me talk to the analysts. Game, game winner? You're not no talking doubt. to them no more? No, no, okay. no. Right. I'm talking to analysts, right. y'all. Okay. Would you feel differently, Joy, starting with you, about the Cowboys this year had they beaten the Niners and beaten the Eagles? Would you feel differently right now? And they were sitting like eight and one loss? Same record. Different in what? Same record. Cowboys would have beaten the Niners. But they dropped one of these other games. They dropped one of these other games. And lost Lost to the Cardinals and the Commanders? Lost to the Chargers. Lost to the Chargers, lost to the Rams. Would you feel differently if they would have beaten the Niners? I'm taking that. Yeah, they're losing the little teams. Beat the big boys. Um, you, you'd feel differently about it. Yeah, I'm taking it, but in my it. mind, I would feel like they're an inconsistent football team. Sure. You know what I mean? That's like, cool. But like, you're going to play them teams in the playoffs. You, but, little but, teams, but, you, but still, though, like, I don't get confidence. Like, okay, you found a way to win those two games against those good opponents, then you dropped it to these sorry teams. Like, I don't got confidence that you're going to go into the playoffs on. and beat this, really, this I, really I, good teams. Michael, Par- Michael Parsons lines up against Lane Johnson, and, and, beats and he beats him. It's like, it's like okay. Compared to, I don't even know the tackles for the Cardinals. And, and right. gets blocked and don't have a sack? What are we, talk, what are we talking I mean, about? I, you asked me from an analyst, and all my years, I, I, I want to I play against the big dogs and have a big game against the big dogs. I, I mean, sure, if I play against the smaller teams, and, and I want to win, okay. right? But I want my, my performance, I have to pick the two. Yeah. I want to get the big, the big teams and big dogs. Yeah. That's what I want to do. So I want to so, go against dudes like uh, my mom at the Patrick time. Patrick Willis. Patrick Willis, yeah, yeah. Luke Keekley. I want to go against that. Amen. I don't want to go against some other guys. Go so, on. so you sit- I, don't even, I don't even talk to the other guys. So, so you sitting here telling me. I'm telling you that. I'm you meet that. Patrick Willis in the hole. Ooh. And you wop wop give him crazy. I've been there. I did that. I'm just yeah. saying. And okay. you give him Come crazy on. work. Ah. And then 
the back to back, um, the other two weeks later, back to back weeks, you see some no name you, linebacker you and, he, and, he, he, and he scoop you up in the hole and you don't make any miss. That's I mean, confidence. You, you know why? Because I know who I am. <laughs> I'll give you an example. I, I forget the safety of that game that, that you showed on um, the um, Thanksgiving game. I, I, player, player, yeah, it was um, Heath. Jeff Heath was white, it? White dude. Jeff Heath. He tackled me before, right? Open field. And, and you know what? We was the sideline. Dude stays as a running back coach. We laughed about it. How this dude get me like, what number, number 38? I didn't even know his name. 38 was his, his number. Yeah, Heath, yeah. Now, let, let somebody like, I don't know, Ed Reed or um, Charles Woodson. Yes. Yeah. I remember playing, my first time playing, I was so excited. I'm going to get Charles Woodson. I'm going to give him my best effort. Mm -hmm. Right? He might got me. I got him too. It was, but it was, a, it was a battle. But the person number 38 for the Cowboys, I was like, okay, he got me. Cool. It won't ever happen again. But, this, I don't, like, I don't like, know if you find confidence in that. To me, to me, there isn't much difference between the Cowboys of last year and the Cowboys of this year. Agreed. She's so, on this. So what I'm saying is... We're on to something, uh, Julie Taylor. All... Uh, could there be? It, there could be. The Cowboys of last year, remember, Joy, what we did on this very same show, Sans James Jones. What we did after the Cowboys beat the Vikings, and they beat the brakes off the Vikings. Finally, we said, Cowboys have beaten a really good team. <coughs> they beat the brakes off the Vikings. Tony Pollard caught that wheel route 60 yards to the house. Dak Prescott, boom, boom, boom. But we're like, ah, oh, Vikings aren't that good. Right. But the Cowboys beat the Eagles. You mentioned it. But the Eagles didn't have Jalen Hurts right. when it happened. So the Cowboys didn't have a convincing win, let alone two of them. Subscribe here to get the latest from Speak and go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.